So should folks test their fasting blood glucose first? That's a great question. And if you are maybe a little neurotic or you want a little more data collection, then that's a great thing to do. But the recommendation that I make in the book is to just track the blood glucose two hours after eating a specific carbohydrate meal that we're testing. The reason for that is that we're trying to simplify this. It, you know, it's already kind of an onerous ask on a lot of people to just do the finger stick and whatnot. And we're really hopeful about some uh, wearable technology where people can get a continuous blood glucose response and maybe it's transdermal and they don't need a finger prick or what have you. So we've already got a little bit of a challenge there. So uh, we've had some questions from folks that admittedly, when I've talked to them, they're like, oh, I like experimenting with this stuff. So keep in mind, this is your uh, relative, your coworker, who all of this stuff just kind of blows them out of the water, but they have some health problems and now they're curious enough that they want to get in and experiment with this. So the, without checking that blood glucose in the morning, what we're doing with the meals is ideally, and we really need to stick to this for it to work, you do it at the same time, you try to do it under the same circumstances. This is all, also why I tend to recommend the morning and not later in the day, because you wake up, you do your business in the bathroom or what have you, but your days are much more normalized mm -hmm. at that early point than they are the rest of the day. Like we tend to have more variability, more stress, things that can push the blood glucose in directions that we really don't like. So even if you're starting the day either on the higher or the lower side, that's going to normalize relative to the carbohydrate that you're eating. And if you're already starting on the higher side, then the carbohydrate's going to push it higher and right. you should have probably been eating fewer carbs already. Right. So it can be a, a helpful data point or it could be the thing that makes people not want right. to do the test at all. So effectively, if you're up for it and you, you want to do it, by all means do it. You do also uh, have people recommend that folks get blood work done. Before Correct. And, that, and that's a really important point to make as part of the triage to enter into the 30 day reset. We do some not overly extensive blood work, but it's very insightful into what your current glucose status is. We do an A1C, a fasting glucose, a fasting insulin, and some other uh, uh, blood work markers that are really helpful for establishing that baseline. So yeah, again, the seven day carb test is one piece of a much larger overall program. So kind of related to, and I think your answer will probably be similar, um, we've had folks ask why not test at the one hour mark in, instead of the two hour mark. And, and that would be great. But what again, we're kind of playing a little bit with the convention of oral glucose tolerance testing and also standard diabetic testing, which is typically looking at that two hour point. But again, that, that time index would be fantastic to have if you, you want to do it. But part of the way that we're able to deal with that is even if somebody had, let's say, a hidden elevated blood glucose response and then it falls down into normal boundaries, most of the time people are not going to feel great. So we also rely heavily on these subjective measures, like how do you feel between meals? Were you foggy headed? Do you have good cognition? And if we have what looks like a pretty good blood glucose response, but we're really foggy headed from that, then we have some questions going on there. And also most likely our blood work that we checked earlier on is going to have some squirrely stuff going on. So again, this is part of an overall picture. So it's important to remember that and not just look at the single testing in isolation. Mm -hmm. um, Rob, I feel great. Why bother with this? Or And or I'm not a diabetic. Why should I be testing my blood glucose? That, that's a great question. And, you know, if you feel like everything, you know, if you feel like you look, feel and perform as good as you want to and your blood work is stellar and you're totally happy with it, then there's really not a hugely compelling reason to do this. But if you feel like there might be something that you could gain additionally with the way that you look, feel and perform, if there's a, if you just want to do a little bit of self-experimentation to see if there are some interesting caveats with the, the carbohydrate amounts and types that you're eating, then this is a great way to, to test that. And I think a lot of people who do a reset or the Whole30, their first question is inevitably like, am I ever going to be able to have X food again? And so this, this would be a way for them to test, you know, like for example, rice or, or lentils and, you know, They've gone through that 30-day program. They are feeling great. They test it. If it's if it you know if their results are are within the right parameters, then maybe they can have that occasionally. Right, right. Um, what blood glucose level at two hours is considered good? What are you looking for? So I'm looking at about a, a, I'm kind of putting a cap at 115 milligrams per per milliliter. I believe are the the units that we're working with there, and this is. 
I wouldn't say arbitrary, but I arrived at this at looking some, at some anthropological research in which hunter-gatherers and pre-Westernized groups were given oral glucose tolerance tests, and their results were stunning. Um, they are so much better than what we see in Westernized populations. And so I looked at that as a, a higher benchmark that I would like to keep people under. Uh, we have a sick care system, and they're really, you know, they're okay if your house burns down. They just don't want it to burn down all at once. And so the, the numbers that I am choosing are not within the conventional standard of care numbers, but they are well represented within that uh, ancestral health, anthropological observations that we've had.